Coming up on today's episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show. Alvo, more like no, though. The Dreams beta is expanding very soon. Feast controllers and Resident Evil 7 brings in the numbers. Also, I'll be doing a very random giveaway at the end of the video, so stick around for that, maybe. Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here, back with episode 4 of the Pumpkin Patch Show, the only PSVR show on the internet, that's 100% the truth, don't look that up, just trust me and don't correct me. As always, I am joined by a very special guest, so would you please welcome today's guest, the entire firewall community arguing over whether or not the grenade launcher is overpowered. How are you doing? Surprisingly intense, aren't they? At least we'll always have quiz night tonight. So some bad news if you were one of the people who was looking forward to some 5 vs 5 cross-play first-person V or shooting in Alvo. Because it seems as though that game has been flushed down the drain. So Alvo was revealed over a year ago and was set to release sometime in 2018. Obviously 2018 is now over and there's been no signs of Alvo, so people started asking questions. So that's when French VR websites, VRplayer.fr, reached out to the independent developers Marden Poll for a comment on the game's status. And then they were told that the game had been cancelled due to investors pulling out and developers trickling out from the studio over time. Now you might know Marden Poll as a developer of one other PSVR title, Quiz Show Tonight, I believe it was called, and it was absolutely raked over the coals as one of the worst PS4 games, PSVR games even, ever made. And while the trailer for Alvo looked pretty good, in my personal opinion, I never had any faith that the actual finished product would look that good, at least not on PSVR. And you know, I just never had much faith in that game at all. However, I was hoping that I would be wrong and it is sad to see a game being cancelled. Some competition for Firewall would have been nice, but right now we're left with zero killed and zero caliber. Why do all these VR shooters have zero in the name? I don't know what's going on there. Let's make some wet dreams together, lads. The wait for dreams has been one of the longest waits of the entire generation, but the finish line is in sight for the game that lets you make other games within it, supposedly. Now, in late 2018, there was a very limited closed beta, but next week they're gonna be opening that out to more people. They have opened out some links so that you can click on that if you're in Europe or North America. Click on those links, sign up for the beta, and fingers crossed you'll get in. I'll post both of the links in the description below for your convenience. Now just keep in mind that the beta will not have PSVR support, that's going to come at launch. But if you're one of the people who is considering getting dreams and considering making content for PSVR, I would still recommend you try and get in this beta, get to know the tools, and then whatever you make in the beta is going to be carried over to the final game. So it's not like it's going to be a waste of time, whatever you do, and then who knows, once the game comes out, you might be able to just easily port it over to VR, we'll see how it goes. Dreams is on course to launch fully in 2019, and what do you think about the Dreams, you know, the game in itself? Are you guys interested in uh, the Dreams? <laughs> can't argue with that. I've really put my foot in it this time, lads. Are you one of those perverts who's into feasts and, you know, other foot fetishes? Well, if so, boy, do I have a controller for you. The 3D Rudder Motion Controller is a controller that's going to let you play your games with your feet when it releases later this spring. Now, why would you want to use a foot controller, you might be asking yourself? Well, as many of you probably know by now, that if you use the Move Controllers, there is a distinct lack of analog sticks on those things. That means developers have had to come up with other ways for locomotion in their games, such as a button press or pointing your move and then moving in that controller with a button press or just teleportation or something like that. So with this 3D rudder motion controller, 
you'll be able to have your move controllers up here while you're sitting down and you'll have your feet on this thing i'll have it up on the screen and you kind of just like tilt your feet forward backwards left right whatever and that can that takes care of all the locomotion while your hands are free to do like whatever despicable things you want to do to the npcs in games because it's awful annoying when you're playing these motion control games you're trying to you're trying to do whatever just whatever sick things you want to do but you can't because you're you have to worry about pressing a button to walk forward or walk backwards something like that's a bit annoying so hopefully this will get rid of that however it is not all rainbows and sunshine and i think the 3d rudder controller does have a lot of big drawbacks that has me holding off and getting it so number one you have to sit down to use it and that's kind of counterintuitive for me a lot of the times I want to stand up when I'm playing my viewer games so sitting down kind of takes away a bit of the immersion for me number two the price of this thing is going to be around 119 euro when it launches later on this spring that's quite steep for something that I'm going to be putting my feet on. Number three is the library of games. You know, that's kind of limited right now. We're told there'll be 30, 30 ish games when it comes out. And that includes games like Red Matter and Sorrento. But there's definitely some noticeable absences on that list, including Skyrim. Skyrim would be a big one for me to use a, a controller like that for. So because of these reasons, personally, I don't see myself picking this thing up at full price. However, if you've got the free cash lying around and burning a hole in your pockets, I still think this is a pretty cool idea in theory, you know. Uh, it's a good solution for the problem. Seeing as Sony won't fix the problem by adding sticks, so this is kind of like the next best thing. And I certainly hope that it gets a lot more support in the future to make it more viable. Speaking of lots of support, we're all just numbers to them. Did you play Resident Evil 7? And if you did, did you do it in VO? The answer to that question is probably yes, as Resident Evil 7 stat tracking website has just revealed that there has been over 600,000 PSVR players for that game. That's 15% of the entire Resident Evil 7 player base. Quite impressive. Now back when Resident Evil 7 launched, its VR aspect was pretty well received by both critics and fans alike, as it allowed players to play the entire Resident Evil 7 game from beginning to end in VR. And personally, I consider it to be the only way to play Resident Evil 7, and it is the first killer app that the PSVR title ever received and it still is today, I consider it to be one of the best top two games. Now, fans of Resident Evil 7 and VR may have been very disappointed when they heard that Resident Evil 2's remake would not be supporting VR, but with these numbers, I think it's probably safe to say that Capcom are going to be looking at Resident Evil 8 or whatever Resident Evil comes next, and they're going to be looking at you know VR support. These numbers are good, I think. Uh, it might not be PS4, it might be PS5 though, but I think there is a bright future there for VR and the Resident Evil franchise. Don't I treat you real good? Okay, so this is very random considering it's not a PS VR game, but I have one European Steam key for Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. So if you want to win that, I'm going to simply get my guests over here. They're going to reveal the, the 12 digit code, whatever it is. And to, to get that, you simply just have to be the first one to uh, enter that in. First one. Fire, uh, first come, first serve. You know, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, the early worm. The early worm. Anyway, lads and ladies, that is it for this episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show. Now, before I go, I want to give a big round of applause to the Patreons who have pledged their support to me, their names will be on screen right now. Let's let's give it up for them. Of course, you can support me on Patreon too. If you like, the link for that will be in the description. However, if you don't want to do that, you can still support me by doing all the traditional and usual shite. And I'll still appreciate it lots. So that's it, lads and ladies. Remember to keep it moist. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.